Watch these drips here. In the depths of this narrow, winding tunnel sits a vital mineral that could one day help power our renewable future. It's red. Yeah. It tells you you're going deeper. Outside that tunnel, the rolling Rocky Mountains of central Idaho. Flanked by miles and miles of beautiful scenery, at this very moment, this land is just luxuriating in the lack of human interaction. Save that tunnel, the mud swallowing our boots. Now you get your workout in. Yeah. <laughs> here, there is one goal. You came here for the cobalt. We came here for There's the cobalt. There's cobalt in these hills. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Cobalt is an ancient material that is now breathing new life inside this mountain. A big reason that cobalt's in demand again? Because its value is going up. We need it for batteries. In 2019, the U.S. produced roughly 500 tons of cobalt, but that wasn't from direct cobalt mining. It was just a byproduct of other mined material. But now, as the need for EVs and battery storage soar, we need significantly more cobalt. Cobalt has been mined in this area for a century, starting in the 1940s to build jet engines during the Cold War. Stand clear of jet intakes and jet exhausts. All go aircraft. Cobalt is now deemed critical by the U.S. government. It is one of 50 considered essential for the U.S. economy and national security. Without these minerals, we simply cannot function. Follow this winding creek up the mountain and you'll find the mine where it all began, Blackbird. What am I looking at? So that is the former open pit. Okay. That's what we would refer to as kind of surface mining. From the early 1900s to the early 80s, Blackbird was ground zero for cobalt mining in the United States and surface mining a practice involving an open pit to gather and mine cobalt. That was commonplace at the time and hardly regulated. There's a lot more regulation nowadays. When we talk 50s and 60s, there wasn't that much regulation around it. The federal government actually asked for the mine to happen and produce, produce, produce. And so corners were cut to be able to produce that cobalt. Both above the surface and below, Water flowed over these exposed metals and then carried the toxic material into nearby streams, poisoning the water, killing critical fish populations, and leaving the land in ruin. No one mines here anymore, have it, since 1982. And a decade after the mine shut down, the EPA proposed adding this site to a list of the most contaminated places in the country. Now, Blackbird has a new owner, Canadian-based mega mining company, Glencore. The legacy of environmental contamination and destruction from Blackbird is well known. We've had local populations of salmon go extinct from the impacts from mining. Wow. Yeah. Cobalt mining as well? Yeah, from cobalt mining specifically. Was Blackbird the site? It was. After decades of work by indigenous groups and local restoration crews, the streams are just now recovering. And here's the wild part. Just on the other side of that historic cobalt blunder sits what could be the future of domestic cobalt mining with a company called Gervois. Gervois believes that they can quadruple domestic production to 2,000 tons of cobalt each year. But that is still only 10% of our country's demand. Going into the side of a mine like this is a very different operation than an open pit. That's undisturbed forest just above us. Uh, it's undisturbed forest just below us. So really, our only disturbance is this face and this portal and the surface facilities that we'll see on so top. it's way less impactful on the surface part. That's right. You're not blowing up a mountain. That's right. You're keeping a mountain, you're putting tunnels in it. And what we'll do at the end is all of this gets filled, we, we cap that portal, we put the slope back, we can revegetate it, and nobody will ever know it was here. This new Gervois project will be the only mine in the United States exclusively focused on cobalt, the first in our country in almost 30 years. At first, it's just a distant hum. Beyond that vent that carries the diesel fumes out of the mine, it gets eerily quiet until... What they're doing here is like a lab. Each one of those holes penetrates our ore body and tells us something about how much cobalt 
and copper and the width, the thickness of that. What we're seeing, it's still worth it to go in there and get it, right? Absolutely. Because cobalt, especially now, has had such a rise. It has had a rise. It's a really volatile metal just because of the way the market works, but it, it has had a rise. We believe it's going to continue to be in demand. The demand for electric cars and better batteries is hotter than ever, making minerals like cobalt highly in demand around the globe. More than two-thirds of the world's supplies of cobalt come from the Democratic Republic of Congo. China has been very strategic in working with partners in the Congo to secure the rights to those mines. They currently own 15 of the 19 cobalt-producing mines in the DRC. There have been a lot of reports of child and forced labor in the DRC as well. An urgent reminder that we need to do it right and do it here. This is a rare issue that is uniting both parties. Relying on companies like Gervois and oversight from state and federal governments to do it better this time around. We're using advanced tools like autonomous drones for surveying. So these kind of technological advances make a real difference in how we're able to, in a socially responsible way, extract minerals from the earth. The Gervois mine has permits from the state of Idaho, the EPA, and the U.S. Forest Service. They all found that Gervois' plans for treating their wastewater and restoring the area when the mine closes will minimize, but not completely eliminate, the harm to the environment. There's so much beauty. Part of that's beautiful, too, in nature. We have to have that. When you look out here and then you turn to the mine, what is the feeling you get? And I think we have a responsibility to continue to do what's challenging. You know, we don't do this because it's easy. We actually do it because it's incredibly hard and we want to see it done right. Our thanks to Ginger. You can watch Ginger's entire special, Lit, America's Future, streaming on ABC News Live and Hulu. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.